Hello and welcome to this Autopipe training class from the Intermediate Learning Path on Static Analysis and Loads. In this class, we will go through an example using the Practice Workbook. So I'm going to open up Autopipe and I'm gonna to navigate to the data set for this course. Open the data set, and I'll open the static underscore IMP piping model. For this class, I'll close the command search utility, but this can always be open from the icon in Autopipe. And I'll also be closing and opening my input grid as I'm working with one screen. We'll start by reviewing the pipe information currently in our model. So from the Modify Ribbon tab, I'll go to the Properties grouping and select Pipe Properties. There's only one pipe identifier currently in this model, and if there were more, I can select from the pull-down menu. But with six STD selected, I'll click OK. The Pipe Properties dialog opens, which shows all of the inputs defining this specific pipe. The pipe size will affect the weight of the pipe with the material density that's extracted from the material library for the designated pipe material defined here. The mill tolerance and corrosion allowance are considered in line with the design code requirements. Generally, the most conservative use is considered. So as an example, the maximum value is considered for weight, but the minimum section is considered for strength. The content weight is dependent on the internal diameter of the pipe and the specific gravity of the contents. Other weight effects include the insulation and the cladding and the lining, which are all controlled by densities taken from the libraries or input by the user. And modifications to the pipe properties can be made directly in this dialog, but also can be made in the input grid. So we're not gonna change anything. Let's click cancel to close this. We can also review our inputs in the input listing. So from the home ribbon tab, under the reports grouping, select input listing. And we're going to make sure we move over pipe properties and center of gravity subreports. You can do so by using the right arrow uh, in the middle of this dialog. Once that's selected, click OK. My report opens up, and if I scroll down to the pipe data listing section, I see the area defining the weight, which is showing the weight per length in pounds per feet. So we see that information for the pipe, the contents, the lining, the insulation, the cladding, and then the total weight. If I scroll down further, I come to my center of gravity report, which shows the weight and center of gravity coordinates for all of the different components in my model. And it categorizes them, and it combines some categories together. After reviewing this, we can close out of the report. Next, we will add an additional weight to our model. So at the midpoint of the valve, A6M, I will select that as my active point. And from the Insert Ribbon tab, under the Extra Data Grouping, I'll select Additional Weight. I'll insert this in additional weight as 220 pounds, which will be applied in the downward direction at this point, but an offset could be applied. And I'll click OK. A blue arrow indicates that a weight's been applied and it's an active symbol. So if I were to double click on it, I can open that dialog again. And if I want more information on the screen from the show ribbon tab, under labels, I can select weight and I can then show that 220 pounds on the screen. I can choose to leave this on or if I want to, I can click it again to turn it off. We saw that we have a center of gravity input report, but we also have a center, center of gravity color plot. So on the show ribbon tab, under color plots grouping, there is an option for center of gravity. If I select that, I can select uh, what I'd like to show the center of gravity for. So in this case, I'll select pipe plus insulation plus cladding plus lining plus contents and click OK. And I see my center of gravity information on the screen. My X coordinate is 1.62, my Y coordinate 3.94, and my Z coordinate is negative 13.66. When I'm done reviewing this information in the color plots grouping, there is a clear button, which brings me back to input mode.
If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.